Hi everyone, Assalamualaikum, Salam Sejahtera. In this session, we'll cover our seventh topic, the expansion wave. We will divide this topic into two parts. This video is the first session of part one, formulating the equations. Let's start with a simple diagram of a supersonic flow moving towards a surface. The surface is deflected into the flow, i.e. an inward deflection. In this case, the flow will produce an oblique shock wave. We've learned about oblique shock waves before in our previous topic. Essentially, across the shock, the flow will decelerate and compress instantaneously, and the process across the shock is not isentropic. But what if Instead of an inward deflection, we have a surface that is deflected away from the flow, i.e. an outward deflection. In that case, this supersonic flow will produce what's called an expansion fan. Across the fan, the flow will accelerate and expand. This process is isentropic, and it is basically the reverse of the oblique shock process shown above. In this session, we will explore about this expansion fan and we will formulate the equations to help us predict what happens across the expansion fan. At the end of this topic, you will learn that this knowledge can be applied on supersonic vehicles to calculate the changes in the flows around these vehicles and to calculate the lift and drag on them. It can also be applied on supersonic flows through engine nozzles, such as rocket nozzles, or supersonic aircraft nozzles. From this, we can calculate the changes in the flows and the thrust produced through these nozzles. This topic is divided into two parts. Part 1 is the formulation of equations and part 2 is its applications on supersonic vehicles and nozzles. We'll go through each of these parts in separate video sessions. To start our formulation, let's compare between the two simplest cases of inward and outward deflections. In each case, we have an infinitesimal deflection d theta, one inward and another one outward. Each deflection produces a small disturbance to the supersonic flow. This process remains isentropic for both cases because the changes are very small and because the incoming flow is supersonic, the small disturbance will only produce a Mach wave, which is a very weak wave. We've learned that earlier about Mach waves in our second topic. Now, because it's a Mach wave, the normal component of the incoming flow crossing the wave has a Mach number of 1. For the inward deflection, there'll be a very small flow compression of positive dp and a very small flow deceleration of negative dm. On the other hand, the small outward deflection produces the reverse, a very small flow expansion of negative dp and a very small flow acceleration of positive dm. In the case of a larger deflection angle delta, it can be thought of as consisting of a series of small deflection angles delta equals to delta theta 1 plus delta theta 2 plus delta theta 3 and so on. Each small angle creates a single Mach wave. So, for a large angle, there will be multiple Mach waves. For the case of the inward deflection, these multiple Mach waves will converge towards each other and pack into a single oblique shock. We already know that an oblique shock is a stronger wave than a Mach wave, so it's not an isentropic process. The reason is because all the small disturbances collide into one large disturbance. The process across a large disturbance is definitely not reversible and therefore not isentropic. On the other hand, for the large outward deflection, the Mach waves will diverge away from each other to create a fan-like wave and do not collide into each other. Because the process is isentropic across each Mach wave, the entire process across the expansion fan remains isentropic. We will see later that the flow expands across the fan. This means that the flow accelerates across it and its pressure reduces as well. In this session, we will focus entirely on this expansion fan case. 
When we zoom into one of the mark waves in the expansion fan, we can draw this diagram on the right. It shows that the deflection angle is d theta, which is infinitesimal, the mark angle is alpha, and the flow vector before the wave in region 1 will change slightly into a different vector after the wave in region 2. The velocity v will change by dv, and the Mach number m will change by dm. Both dv and dm can be either positive or negative indicating that they can either increase or decrease. Our math will determine later whether they are positive or negative. To build our math, we need to analyze the physics of the flow on this single Mach wave, and we will integrate multiple waves later for large deflection angles. The main question to ask in our analysis of the flow is this. How would the flow properties change across the Mach wave? Our task is to find specific mathematical relationships between these flow parameters and the geometry of the deflection. The changes in the flow are mathematically labeled as dv, dm, dp, dt, and d rho, which means that these are small changes and can be either positive or negative. In the next few slides, we will derive our equations that will lead to the main function to study supersonic flows across expansion fans. This function is called the Prandtl-Meyer function. It has been long and well established at the turn of the last century, particularly by Theodor Meyer, a doctoral student of Ludwig Prandtl. If you are interested about this history, you can read more about it in the link here. Now, back to our derivation. We start with the definition of the Mach number, square each term, and expand the speed of sound term into its fundamental physical properties, p and rho. Then, we differentiate this equation into a form labeled as equation 1. This is the most important starting point of our derivation towards the parental mayor function. What we need to do next is to expand each of the differential term dv over v d rho over rho, and dp over p to finally get dm over m. By knowing dm over m, we can know exactly how much m changes across the fan. We also need to relate between all these differential changes and the small deflection angle d theta. In the next few slides, there'll be a lot of math, but I'll briefly state the key aspects in each derivation process. The basics of the physics and the math should already be familiar to you at this stage from your previous fluid dynamics and thermodynamics classes. Also, I would suggest that you follow through each derivation process in this lecture by working out the algebra of the equations that are shown here. For a more complete and thorough explanation, you can always go back and read the topic in any proper textbook. For me, I would recommend the Introduction to Compressible Flow book by Ostuizen and Karskalen. You can find the link to their book here. To start building up into the parental mayor function, we need to look at the continuity equations in their differential forms. For the conservation of mass, we will equate the normal component of the mass flow rate before the wave and after the wave. This will give you equation 2. You can refer to the diagram on the right to see the normal components of the velocity as shown by the blue vectors and labeled as n. For the conservation of momentum, we convert the equation of momentum balance into its differential form. We work out the algebra to simplify the equation into equation 3. Combining equations 2 and 3, we can get rid of the term dn. Again, note that the incoming flow across a Mach wave has a Mach number of 1 which means that its velocity is equal to the speed of sound, i.e. n equals to a. This will get us to equation 4. We will use this equation later. One important fact that we have to use is that the tangential component of the velocity, l, does not change. This is labeled before and after the wave as the red vectors. We can write that fact as a mathematical statement in the first line here. From the geometry, you can work out the angle alpha before the wave and alpha minus d theta after the wave. 
Using the trigonometric identity in equation 5, we can expand the cosine alpha minus d theta term to finally get equation 6. Now, because d theta is very small, the terms involving d theta can be simplified as shown in the sets of equation 7. Using these simplifications, we can convert our equation 6 into equation 8. Equation 8 is very important in our derivation towards the Prandtl-Meier function. We will use this later into our final equation. Next, we will look at our conservation of energy. This form in equation 9 is already familiar to us. The ideal gas equation will also be used in its differential form as shown in equation 10. When we cancel the dt term in the ideal gas law by using the dt term from the energy equation, and using the specific heat relationships, we will arrive at equation 11. Again, I suggest you to work out algebra to make sure that you understand how to get to equation 11. Next, we can simplify equation 11 further. From equation 4 that we've derived earlier, we can rearrange that into equation 12. Using 12 into 11, we simplify this term here and rewrite the whole thing in terms of dp over p, as shown in equation 13. Remember, dp over p is one of the terms that we will need later to complete our prandtl meyer function. Next, we need to work on equation 13 further. Remember that equation 8 relates dv over v to d theta. We can use this back into 13 to relate dp over p with d theta as in equation 14. Then, we will use the relationship between dp and d rho in equation 4 to get equation 15 that relates d rho over rho with d theta. This is our last puzzle to complete the prandtl meyer function. So, putting all the pieces together into equation 1 that we started off earlier, we will get equation 16. We do this by using equations 8, 14, and 15 into equation 1. Our final equation here, equation 16, essentially relates the unknown parameter dm with the known parameter d theta as a function of the Mach number of the incoming flow. This equation is the essence of the prandtl meyer function, which we will finalize in our next lecture video. Okay, we've now completed this session. Thank you for listening to this lecture till the end. I hope you can follow through everything in this lecture clearly. See you in our next video. Until then, have a good day and bye.